I was in the middle of creating this invisibility tutorial when Jamie Fenn beat me to the punch. But not to worry, I'm going to take it a whole lot further and show you how to trap these 3D glasses to your face to sell that Hollywood effect. I'm also going to show you how to isolate it to just a shirt or an article of clothing to make it look like an invisibility cloak. Let's get into it. So as far as filming this effect, it's super, super easy. All you have to do is you have to take your footage of yourself talking and then you just need a clean plate shot. Now you could go into like Photoshop or something to get a clean plate as well um, but it's better that you grab it in the moment because it's just going to match a little bit better one thing to focus on is right here i'm in focus the background here is obviously not in focus and i made sure to lock off my focus when i took my clean plate because i don't want that focus to change uh, for that so without further ado let's head into the fusion page and let's get started so first things first, we have to roto out our subject. I'm going to use a magic mask for that. You could manually do this, but obviously it's going to take some time. So if you have the page version, make sure you're using magic mask. Let's draw over our subject just like so. Bada boom, bada bing. I like to deselect everything else. Better safe than sorry. I'm going to select the mode to better and then track forwards and backwards. Now let's go into our media pool and grab our clean plate, which is this clip right here. Now I need to freeze the frame that's the clean plate, so I'm just gonna press two on my keyboard to view it. I'm gonna open a time speed node. I'm gonna go forward here until I'm completely out of the frame right there, and I'm just gonna hit freeze frame. Now this time speed is a frozen frame. It's a perfect clean plate. Now we're gonna add a displace node. We're gonna plug our magic mask into the displace node and then we're gonna merge that back over top of our, our footage. I'm gonna grab this merge, merge it over top, just like so. All right, now let's make sure that our media out is showing on our monitor here. We can see there's a bit of displacement already, uh, but I'm gonna take this displace node and I'm gonna crank up the refraction strength a bit, and now uh, my person is gonna show through. You can see myself there. I am gonna increase the light power just ever so slightly. You don't wanna do, overdo this because it really starts to look fake pretty fast. Uh, so maybe push it up to around there, maybe increase the refraction a little bit more. And then I'm going to actually give it a bit of a spread, which is just going to give some roll off to this refraction. So something like that. I don't want it to be ultra sharp. So that is the base to the uh, invisibility effect. Uh, but we're going to take it a little bit further. I'm going to add a prism blur after our merge, just like so. I'm going to plug this magic mask into the prism blur. And I'm going to change the blur strength on the prism blur all the way down because I don't want it to blur the footage. Aberration distance, I'm going to keep that pretty uh, low as well. And then the aberration strength, I'm going to turn up just a little bit, something like so. And then I might turn the center down to sort of the bottom because then it's just going to show up a little bit more in my head. Because if you see the center of this, if it's up here, there's no aberration in my head and there's less background detail. So I'm going to do something like that right there. Now, most people would call this good, but I actually don't quite like this because right now the entire displace, so you can see an entire image is being replaced over top of original video footage. And if we were to turn this on and off, you can see that the lighting in the left side is actually changing slightly. So I actually only want to replace my person. So if we take our magic mask now, we can use it to mask our entire footage. So if I put this on top of the merge here, so now this magic mask is masking the merge you can see that it's actually only uh, applying to our person now. So if we are to turn this merge off and on, you can see the lighting in here is not changing because the only thing that's being replaced is uh, my magic mask. However, now you can see some hair bleeding through. You can also see a bit of my ear because the magic mask is not perfect. So I'm just gonna refine that with my magic mask a little bit. I'm gonna crush in my threshold just like so, and then I'm gonna drag it over to the left side and that's gonna push it further to the outside uh, there's still a bit of hair coming through that I don't like, so I'm actually going to erode it a little bit, maybe something like that, and then maybe give it a little bit of a blur, something like so. Uh, and that gives me the look that I'm going for. I'm going to give you guys one extra little bonus right now in the video, and you can skip past it if you want, but I'm going to show you how to do that sort of glowy reveal that I did at the start, and it's all powered by a fast noise node. So if I add a fast noise node here, I'm gonna place my media out into, I'm gonna press this right here so I can see two screens at once. It's already on the second viewer and then this, I'm gonna press one to place it in the left viewer. I'm gonna go into the color of the fast noise. I'm gonna go into gradient and I'm just gonna crush this in by a lot and I'm gonna take the black and I'm just gonna turn the opacity down just like so. 
and just make sure that this is real tight so that you sort of start to get the sharper line. Then let's go to the noise tab. Let's increase the scale by something like so. Let's also increase the detail just like so. And now I'm going to add a merge node. And with the merge node selected, I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna drag it on top of the displace. So again, this is our original footage that's being frozen in place, then it's being displaced to give us our invisibility effect. And now this merge node is going over top of that. I'm gonna take my fast noise and I'm gonna plug it into the green foreground element of our merge. With the merge selected, I'm gonna change the operator mode to mask. So now it's being applied as a mask. And now with our fast noise, what we can do is we can go into the color and we can change the offset to pretty much increase the transparency areas and decrease them. So if I slide this left, you can see that all my little holes start to disappear. But if I increase it, it does the exact opposite, just like so. So I'm gonna go to when I point at myself, which is right here. I'm gonna add a keyframe on offset and I'm gonna drag it all the way to the point where my person is fully visible, just like so. I'm gonna go forward, let's say 20 frames. I'm just gonna write plus 20 right here, like so. Now I'm forward 20 frames and I'm going to decrease the offset so that my person disappears just like so. Now over the course of these 20 frames, my person goes invisible, but you can see that the prism blur is being affected still this entire time. So what I'm actually gonna do is instead of placing it right here on my timeline, I'm gonna place it right after the displace because now it's also gonna be masked by this merge right here. And now you can see that our person is falling apart to pieces and going invisible. I'm gonna add an edge detect node and I'm gonna plug my fast noise into the edge detect. I'm gonna press two to see my edge detect. I'm gonna go back to here and you can see all the edges showing up uh, during our animation period. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my edge detect, I'm gonna drag it over top of my footage just like so. Now if we look at our media out, our edge detect is showing up. And with this merge selected, we're gonna change the no apply mode from normal to screen, and that's gonna make the black disappear. I'm gonna take the same magic mask and use it to mask the effect. Now with the edge detect selected, I'm going to decrease the edge width by quite a bit, just like so. I'm going to switch the mode from RGB edges to grayscale edges. I'm gonna change the edge color to a teal. Then I'm going to add a glow node, and I'm going to add this one right here. I'm going to decrease the spread a bit, but I'm going to increase the gain to add another glow node, just like so. Uh, I'm gonna decrease the spread again, but increase the gain. And then one more glow node for good measure, increase the spread. And in these glow nodes, let's make sure that our color filter is also this teal. So let's take a look at the effect we just created. Vloom, and we're disappeared. Beautiful. We got the main effect done. Now let me show you how to isolate it to an article of clothing. So ideally you wear something that uh, has a bit of color. So I chose to wear a green shirt for this effect just cause it's a little bit easier to key. I'm just gonna disconnect my magic mask for now cause we don't need it. We'll put it over to the side and I'm going to add a Delta keyer. I'm gonna plug my media in into the Delta keyer and take a look at it. I'm gonna take this eyedropper right here. I'm gonna drag it over and grab the green of my shirt just like so. That looks good. Now, if I select my viewer and hit A, it's gonna show an alpha channel and pretty much black is transparent and white is opaque. And we want my entire shirt to be black and the rest to be white. It's to start, we're gonna take this gain and I'm just gonna increase this gain slider and that just sort of adds contrast pretty much to this uh, alpha channel. So balance adds green or magenta to the image and you just gotta see which way uh, you gotta push it for your video footage. But for me, I'm gonna push it to the left just like so and that's already a pretty good key of my shirt. Now I'm gonna go into my mat and I'm just gonna play with my threshold. I'm gonna crush it in just like so that we get a hard edge. I'm gonna push it to the right there. I might add a little bit of blur, something like that. I'm also gonna erode it uh, a little bit, something like so, maybe a little bit less blur. I'm gonna take my media one in. I'm gonna hit Control C, Control V to have a second copy of it. I'm gonna press A so that I get out of this alpha view. I'm gonna use my Delta here and plug it into the mask of my Media One in. And now you can see we've masked just our shirt, but there's a couple issues. There's transparency, as you can see in my eye right there uh, and in the window right here. So to take care of that, I'm gonna add a polygon. And because my shirt doesn't move like crazy, I'm just gonna use this as a garbage mat. So we're gonna just draw around my shirt like so. 
making sure that all the problem areas are being deselected. And now I'm gonna take my polygon and plug it into the mask input of the Delta here. And now it's only being affected to my shirt right here. But what we're trying to do is create a mask of just our shirt. And right now we've got the opposite. Let's change that. Let's go into our media one. Let's go into settings and apply mask inverted. Now we have a mask of just our shirt. We're gonna plug that into the displace and into the prism blur. And we're also gonna plug it into the mask of the final merge again, so that we only paste what we want on top of our footage. Now, if we look at our footage, we have a transparent shirt, but the rest of us is still intact. And that looks great. And if you wanted to invert this option, we're just gonna disconnect this again here. If we bring our magic mask back, right? We're gonna plug our media one in back into our magic mask. We're gonna apply our magic mask to our prism blur and displace and to our final merge, just like so. We're back to the regular effect. But then with this Delta here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna merge just the shirt back over top of our footage. And we can do that right here. Let's merge this back over top. And now our shirt is merged back over our footage. I think this might be my favorite effect right here. It gives, it just looks awesome. Like when have you seen a see-through shirt like this? Uh, and if you're getting a bit of a ring like this, you can also go into your Delta here, go into your mat and just turn down or increase the erode, I guess, a little bit just like so. And now for the coolest part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to track some 3D glasses onto your head and it's gonna look phenomenal. Now, I've already done a 3D head tracking tutorial in the past. I taught you guys how to do some oscillating text around your head. And to do this effect, you're gonna to have to watch at least part of that video to learn how to do the 3D head tracking. But the rest, I'm gonna show you inside of this video. So to track on my 3D glasses, I'm just gonna add a second fusion composition just because to do it all in one is gonna get a little bit messy. So I I have my effect that we just created right on the bottom right here. It looks great. Uh, if I enable this, this is just the exact same footage, but just a clean shot of it. So there's no effect to it applied right now. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna track the glasses to my face and that's the only element that we're gonna have as a pass coming from this top fusion composition. So the rest is just gonna be transparent. At this point, you'll have to get a 3D model of some glasses and cgtrader.com has a lot of free options. I just typed in glasses and then selected free and there's tons of options. So the easiest file format for us to use in this case is gonna be FBX, which is just some type of 3D file format. So just make sure that you select one that has FBX in it and then download it. Once you have it downloaded, you're gonna go into Fusion in the top toolbar, you're gonna to hit Import and then FBX Scene. You're gonna grab your glasses file and hit Open. A menu like this is gonna show up. You don't need cameras or animation or lights, so just make sure these are the only options selected and hit OK. Now this is gonna drop this node tree sort of randomly sometimes on your Fusion page. So I'm just gonna zoom out like crazy and I'm gonna drag this up to the rest of our nodes. And let's take this final Merge 3D that it rendered and plug it into our Merge 3D of our face track, just like so. And as you can see in our 3D viewer, the glasses are way too large for our scene and also are not turned the proper way. Let's take, let's add a Transform 3D after this Merge 3D. Let's turn the scale way down and let's look at our Renderer 3D to see uh, what type of size we need to go down to here which is gonna go way down, something like that. Let's rotate them around so that they're facing the camera. Let's change the Z rotation a little bit and then probably move the X over, bring the Y down a little bit. So we're going in the right direction right here, but let's open our Merge 3D and let's actually align the glasses uh, to our face right here. With my camera selected, I'm just gonna disable show view control so that we get rid of all these green lines so that we see just the face. And I'm actually pretty close right here. You just want these glasses uh, to line up with the Z axis of the face. So if we change the Z value here, you can see that they're going forwards and backwards away from the face. And we want them to be touching the face just like real glasses would. Uh, we don't want them to be sticking too far out. So if I hit control, then I can move this with a little bit more fidelity, something like that. So now our glasses are actually on our face. Let's uh, go back to our render of 3D. So if we open our merge right here, you can see our glasses uh, just like so. 
And if we take the value of the two spheres, so if you select an item, you can see which item you're selecting. So the spheres are controlled by this Cook Torrance node right here, which usually you'd be plugging materials into, but we're not gonna get into that with this video. I'm just gonna take the opacity of this material right here and turn it down so that when we look at our final footage, so let's open this on actually one and the final footage on two, now the, the lenses are more transparent. But as you can see, I've got a pretty big head on my shoulders and these legs do not line up at all. So I'm gonna select line, which is the front of the glasses, and then this is the right-hand side. So I'm just gonna pull that to the side right here so we can work on it. I'm gonna add an XF transform 3D, just like so. And then with that selected, we're gonna have to remove our pivot point right over to the hinge right here. So I'm gonna use that, use these values, values here, drag my Y there, and then just drag these values until my pivot point is lined up properly. So again, I want it to be right below the hinge. Right, there we go. So that's right below the hinge. And now what we can do with this transform 3D is we can change the Y rotation of just this leg and actually turn it all the way around. And because we move the pivot point to the hinge, it's gonna stay attached to the glasses. So let's move it somewhere like so. And let's do the same thing uh, with the other leg. All right, so now the glasses are tracked to my 3D head. It looks pretty good. Uh, it, the tracking is doing a pretty good job. Let's do a little bit more tweaking to our transform 3D now that it's in the proper spot of her face. So let's slide it over like so. Let's maybe decrease the scale a little bit, bring it down to somewhere like that. And let's probably change the Y rotation because it looks like it's a little bit off. And now in our camera 3D, let's go into image and disable image plane and now the glasses are the only thing that are in the shot. But the issue right now is these glasses are already showing up right at the start of the clip before my person disappears. So let's just go back into our original clip. Let's open it in Fusion. Let's grab the fast noise, Control C, go back to this other composition right here, go into Fusion, go Control V, place a mask on the renderer 3D with the fast noise, and now you can see it's gonna disappear and appear at the same time as our effect does. All right, and now we've finished every single part of this tutorial. So we've got the base of the effect. I've shown you how to isolate it to an article of clothing. This would also obviously work on a blanket or anything else. And then I've also shown you how to track in these cool 3D glasses. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I know that it started off sort of easy, but then got really complicated as we went on, but I hope that you guys were able to follow along. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please do that right now or check out my other videos. I think they're pretty great. Thanks for watching. See you next time.